Hello, friends. May the peace of Jesus be with all of us inside of our hearts and inside of our minds. My name is Cara Valentino, and I am with the Light of the Soul Spiritist Center in Apex, North Carolina, in the United States. And I'm here to talk to you today about seeking peace of heart through charity. And I wanted to start with a quote from St. Vincent de Paul from the Gospel According to Spiritism. And St. Vincent de Paul says, The soul cannot rise to high spiritual regions except by devoting itself to its neighbor. Only in the rapture of charity does it find happiness and consolation. Be good, support your brothers, and put aside the horrible wound of selfishness. The path of eternal happiness will open to you once that duty has been fulfilled. And this is St. Vincent de Paul. So this idea I wanted to share with you today, friends, is this idea that, that selfishness is a wound that needs healing. These are St. Vincent de Paul's words, but it made me think as I was reflecting on preparing for today that, that a wound, you know, that a, a wound in our heart or a wound itself there are basic steps to care for a wound, right? Those would be you know, cleaning the wound and bandaging the wound and then following the best practices to heal that wound quickly. And if we think first about cleansing, you know, any charitable work, whether it is moral charity or whether it is the act of giving alms or whether it's acts of service, you know, in the Spirit to Center, we have our food drive. We have monthly trips to the refugee center to bring donations and to pray with them and to do the gospel with them. So there are organized acts of charity. There is the moral charity that consists of being kind and being tolerant of our brothers and sisters' faults the way that we want to be. We want to be, uh, we want others to be tolerant when we are making mistakes. But this, these acts of charity are cleansing, right? They, they bring light into our soul. And, uh, and to disinfect a wound, I don't know if you've heard that ultraviolet light actually is a, will kill germs and will, will, uh, will, will disinfect a wound and will disinfect uh, germs from surfaces. And charity is like that for us. It's like this bright light in our soul that, that disinfects, right? It helps to clean this wound of selfishness because selfishness and charity cannot exist in, in, the, same, in the same space. And then there's this idea of, of bandaging, right? That, um, that when you hurt your body, when you have a wound, you know, you clean it and you put you know, antibiotics on it, and then you bandage it, you cover it to protect it. And so if we think uh, about charitable works, it in and of itself is an act of protection. For example, when I first started a few years back going to the Spiritus Center in Apex, you know, um, Anna Paula invited me to come to the food drive. This is a weekly charity activity that involves going door to door to offer, to collect food donations. That's the official uh, the official agenda, if you will, it's the, uh, the official purpose, but really the unofficial purpose is to, to hold these homes in prayer and to ask the good spirits of the Alta de Souza fraternal campaign to be in those homes and open the hearts of everyone there on the physical and on the spiritual plane and to, um, and to just to offer blessings and a consolation and to bring light to that neighborhood. But when she told me go door to door, I was like, that's not, no, I'm not going to do that. Thank you for inviting me, but that's not going to happen. It's, but every week I'm coming, you know, to the public meetings. I'm coming to the Saturday study. And so twice a week, she just with a big smile on her face would say, oh, Cara, would you like to come on Saturday to the food drive? And I would look at her and think, why is she continuing to ask me? Didn't she hear me say last week that I said, no, I'm not going to do that. But I would be like, thank you for inviting me. Not this week. But something strange started to happen. So month after month after month, I am going, you know, every week, twice a week, I'm going to the center. And she's asking me, do you want to um, come to the food drive? And I'm thinking to myself, is this lady crazy? And did she not hear that I said, no, I am not going. I'm not going to give up my Saturday where I lay in bed and I relax because I work five days a week. And so Saturday, I'm going to relax. And she's trying to take that from me. So I kept telling her, no, thank you. I have something to do. What I had to do was lay in my bed and dig in my phone and play gummy drop or whatever, you know, little silly phone game I was playing. But something happened. And after a while, it became 
impossible for me to enjoy that time laying down. I would be laying in bed and I knew that she and the um, director of the center were out doing the food drive and I was laying in my bed and my conscience began to speak to me and say, you're laying in bed and you could be helping. It's only like 45 minutes. Why don't you go? I began to feel more and more um, disturbed inside. Like I had no peace in my mind and I had no peace in my heart. So I was like, fine, let me just go do it once. If I hate it, then I won't do it anymore. But at least I will have calmed this voice inside of me that just kept saying, just try it, just try it. And what I realized is that that time, that all day in my bed was a time where bad thoughts were accumulating. So when I began to do the charity work, I realized that it's a protection for me because that meant that I would go to the center at like two o'clock, we do charity, and then after that would be the study. So by the time I leave the center, like 7, 7.30, I'd get home at like 8. I'd be too tired to do anything, to get into any, you know, mischief. So it was protecting me. And there's also, if you think about um, charity work being a bandage, right? Like this idea of, of, of this bandaging, this, this wound in our heart of selfishness. It's also a bandage is protection, right? So I was being protected from not just, you know, the temptation to engage in any vices or do any foolishness on a Saturday night, but also, you know, I would find, especially because we'd pray so much before we would go to ask for protection, we'd ask to help keep our thoughts elevated. We would ask for help to keep our hearts open. And so it was like the, the charity work began to be a protection from bad thoughts, from thoughts of, of selfishness, from thoughts of laziness, um, from thoughts of being sorry for myself, from thoughts of being jealous of what other people had. Because when you're doing charity, you have more than whatever you're helping. And you realize very quickly, I realized very quickly that I had nothing to be upset about. Like there's nothing I should be complaining about. When you see the condition of some of our brothers and sisters and how deeply they are suffering, there's just simply nothing in us that, that can... Um, <laughs> that can continue to, to be selfish and feel sorry for ourselves. It's just such a reminder to be grateful. And in that reminder, in that protection, in that healing that takes place through charity, there, that peace begins to start to first start in the mind, because I believe peace of heart begins in the mind, and then begins to fill our heart. And what I also know is that had I not begun to assist on that weekly food drive, I know that there's um, there was places inside of me that needed to be cleaned that would not have received the attention had I not been engaged in that work. And I know that had I not taken the time to deny my rest time, right, which is really, again, just laying in bed, being lazy, doing nothing, doing nothing worthwhile whatsoever with my time, that I received a lot of peace and consolation from being willing to give up that 45 minutes of my week. And I also know I would not have been willing to go and do the, the refugee charity where you see people that are really, really, really suffering. And and it's heartbreaking, you know, and it just really, again, makes me realize that we, you know, have so, so much abundance in the physical realm, yet inside I found I had a lot of spiritual emptiness that, that doing charity work really helped me to, um, to feel some consolation, just as was promised, just as the same promise that St. Vincent de Paul made. So there's also this idea, those, those three things, right? So when you're cleaning a wound, the selfishness that, that stops us from wanting to be charitable, charitable, this selfishness that made me want to stay in bed, this selfishness that made me, you know, just um, withhold the, the part of myself that's willing to be of service because I needed to take a rest which is, again, it sounds so silly to hear myself say it, but, but hopefully this, this message of, of, uh, of, of humility and, and allowing some of my own vulnerability to show will help us all take a look inside of ourselves, honestly. But the three practices in wound care is cleaning the wound, bandaging the wound, and then following the best practices for healing wounds, the best practices in, in wound healing care. And those three things are to make sure you eat a healthy diet, to make sure you're avoiding like any vices like smoking or drinking. These activities hinder the body's ability to generate new cells and heal itself. And then also to keep that wound clean and, and dressed, keep it with, um, keep it bandaged. And 
So when you think about eating healthy, there's also this idea of, of healthy thoughts. We have a mental diet and we also have a, a spiritual diet. And so I found that that the, the continuing of the charitable activities would um, would open me to be more willing to learn, would open me inside to to examine spaces in myself that um, that made me willing to look at places where I was not really thinking in a positive way, made me willing to look at places where I was not really acting in a positive way, and to begin to spend more time to have a healthier mental diet, being willing to study more, and being willing to um, to admit where I needed to learn. And that's that's humbling, right? It's, it's humbling, but it also brought a lot of peace because a lot of the selfishness, that wound of selfishness, the ego was one of those wounds of selfishness. And part of the reason why I think many of us don't admit to where we need to work on ourselves is we don't want to look bad. And the willingness for me to look bad actually has brought me so much healing and so much willingness to begin to 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 do the work that it takes to clean inside the soul uh, and I'm so grateful for all the all that I have learned I'm so grateful to know that I have way more to learn than I actually know but the the willingness to study to have a healthy mental and spiritual diet to help cleanse this wound of selfishness um, has been really helpful to me and brought me a lot of peace um, and also the, the avoidance of vices. Um, I used to have a very bad drinking problem and, you know, I, I'm very grateful for my time in the Spiritus Center that, you know, I've learned that that's not the healthiest diet and does not attract the spiritual friends that I would like to have in my life. And so uh, that has been also the staying away from vices has helped my my heart also began to heal from that wound of, of selfishness as well. Although we've got a lot of work to do still, I know the practice of charity is, is the, 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 the most powerful medicine for that. And so, you know, in reflection, uh, I, I think about the, the words of St. Vincent de Paul, right? We think about how the, the quote that we started with and how healing the, the, the wound of selfishness through charity does bring us peace of heart, which starts with peace of mind. And it's and it's through charity that this brings us this peace. And the, the words that he said were, the wound of selfishness also causes great suffering and charity and self-denial are the way. The path of eternal happiness will open to you once that duty has been fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, my friends, I pray that these words will inspire even just one of us to be willing to look within at that wound of selfishness and be willing to take the blessing of this opportunity of reincarnation to offer ourselves in service that we may also not just expiate our past wrongs, but also bring light into our soul, peace into our heart, and calm into our minds. May God bless us all on this day. Commitment and Responsibility Path to Inner Peace We are travelers from the past. It is right that our path is marked by limitations and depths, which the Lord invites us to repair it for our own happiness. The soul cannot rise to high spiritual regions except by devoting itself to its neighbor. Only in the delight of charity it finds happiness and consolation. Be good, support your brothers, put aside the horrible wounds of selfishness. The path of eternal happiness will open to you once that duty has been fulfilled. May my incarnate brothers Believe the word of the friend who speaks to them, saying, It is in charity that you must seek peace of heart, contentment of soul, the remedy for the afflictions of life. Take, therefore, these two words, devotion and self-denial, and you will be strong because they sum up the duties that charity and humility impose on you. The feeling of accomplishment will give rest and resignation to your spirit.